Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the grab component and a lot of this information you already know because we haven't changed that much in the grab component but I thought about some things I could change, uh, show you here and one thing is this little overview. I'm going to talk about this in the tutorial and also at the end we are going to talk about this again. But there are basically three different modes. You have the desktop mode, the VR laser mode and the hand modes for crabbing. And we have some different features that are associated with the crabbing. And we are going to have a look on what will work with what. For example, this crabbing here, it's for the crab sockets. So I need sockets in order to crab this eraser. And this is only working for the hands. And we will talk about some of the examples and let's dive right in. So first of all, I'm going to start by creating a new blueprint actor again, calling it BP cap. And I'm going to add the cap to it and a simple crap component. So this way I should be able to crap it instantly. So I have added it, let's add the crap component. And now if I hit compile and play, I should already be able to crap the cap. So let's try it out. First, I'm going to start in the desktop mode here. And you can see it's highlighting. I'm able to crap it. We have the small hover effect we talked about in the non-VR tutorial and it's staying in place. So let's have a look why it is staying in midair. So first of all, we have the different crab types. We have normal and physics handle. Physics handle will collide with objects, but in order for this to work, we need to set up the mesh. And all of this information is not new. We have other tutorials covering this exact um, process. But just as a recap, we need a socket called attach point. This is the point all the attachment will be calculated based off. And we have different sockets here. In this case, one for the right hand and one for the left hand. It's using the 07 animation for the hands. And just as a quick recap, I'm going to recreate just another socket here for the left hand. So let's also use this 07 animation and calling it 02. So I'm going to select this pose here and then I'm going to reposition the socket. Also remember, since this is the left side of the hand, we need to flip the X axis. I'm going to do this in just a couple of seconds. So let's flip it here. And now we have our left hand rotated roughly in the right place. And now I'm also able to crap at this position. So now I have two for my left hand and one for the right hand. This is totally fine. You don't need an even number for this to work. Also make sure we have our simple collision. Otherwise all physics related stuff will not work in Unreal. So in this case, everything is set up. Now we can work with the physics collision. But as you're seeing here, it's not working. The reason for us it's not implemented for the non-VR pawn, so we need a laser. But if we try to crap it with the laser, you can already see it snaps to the mesh, but I'm not able to pull it up. The reason for this is if you do anything with physics, the mesh needs to be the root component. So it's true for the physics handle. It's also true for simulating physics. And now if I reroute it, everything works the way it should be. And I can move it around. It's colliding nicely. With the environment, I can rotate it, I can scale it, so like I want it to be. Also, now I'm able to set the snapping mode to physics, and this way, if I let go, it just falls down. The next thing we have is this should be upright, and if we turn this off, we can actually see if we grab the mesh, not this one, but this one here, and now if I move the laser around, I can I can rotate the cap. And if I move my controller up and down, you can see it's behaving like it's really attached to the laser. And if I turn it on for comparison, 
you can see it's trying to always be upright so I'm not able to rotate it in this direction anymore and also if I put the laser up and down you can see it's nicely aligned to the world. So this is a nice little new feature we've implemented here. Let's turn it off again. Of course, can be picked up. You can enable or disable this. The snap and replace we will talk about later. Max distance is the max distance you can have to a socket if you try to crap and you're too far away from a socket, you will not be able to crap it. Spawn tiny display is also something only visible with the laser. And in order for this to work, we need some data assets. And we have a whole tutorial covering the data asset file. So just a very quick recap. And in order for this, um, if you don't know what I'm doing here, just go back to the tutorial about the data assets. Basically, I'm just creating a new data table entry for this cap, defining its category, its name, and also a little image. If we open it up, you can see it's looking like this. So now if I grab it with the laser, you can see I have this nice tiny display on the left side with the image I've just created and the name is kept tutorial. So everything is now inside of there and you can add this to all the grabbable objects if you want to. So for example, it's also added to the statue here. And of course, you can also expand on this functionality. So let's turn this back to normal here because we're going to switch to the hands and physic handle is not working properly with the hands. So let's set it to normal. And if I turn on this auto snap feature, I don't need to push any button. I just need to be close to the object in order for it to grab it. So this is a nice way if you don't want to use it to touch a lot of buttons. And now the most important one, I think, because this one is so cool, you can add so much functionality. So we have a lot of dispatches here. We can use, for example, if the actor was picked up or released, um, if it snapped to something, things like this. So you can really be creative with all of those. We're going to talk about the key input today. So let's add this here and add a simple switch on this key enum. So now if I open this up, I have all my predefined buttons and I can, for example, let's use the trigger one. So if I grab this item and I pull the trigger, I will rewrite all functionalities and trigger a new action. So in this case, let's spawn an emitter and also let's spawn our hand projectile. So and now every time I grab this all other functionalities will be overwritten I had for the trigger previously. And now if I pull the trigger, you can see the explosion is spawning in the cap and the hand is being spawned. You can also see that all of this happens twice. The reason for this is it's happening if I trigger it and if I let go. So if I only want the first trigger, I'm going to use this boolean here. Also going to scale down the expl explosion a little bit. And now only one hand and one explosion has been spawned every time I pull the trigger. If I let go of the cap, the trigger has the functionality it also had before. So this is very cool. This also works for the laser. I can grab it from the distance and now I have the same override functionality as you can see here. So now I can throw hands with my cap on statues. Regarding the multi-user functionality, we have implemented this replicate key pressed. So if you want to replicate it for multi-user, just check this here. And we have also given you the ability to grab the attached actor instead of this actor. So if another actor is attached to this actor, you would instead grab this one here. So as you know from all our other tutorials, all components need their own tag. So in this case, for example, if I want to track something, the static mesh I want to track needs the tag drag. And if you don't set a tag here, as you can see, it will just pick up the root component. So if 
you want to grab the root component, you don't need a tag, but if it's not the root component or you would have multiple objects you want to grab, you really need to work with this tag like in the other tutorials. And last but not least, of course, we have our highlighting like in the other components. So that there, again, you can change the highlighting colors and also the highlighting type. So very basic approach. Now, if I hover over the mesh, you can see it's in a different color. So as a little recap, I created this infographic for you where you can see on the left side, there are the different features. So the tiny display, the physics handle, keep upright, grab sockets, auto attach and replace controls. And I've tried to list them for the desktop VR laser and VR hands. So as you can see, not everything is working or making sense with everything else. But of course, if you would need something, for example, the tiny display for the desktop, it should be quite easy for you to implement this functionality yourself. So thanks for watching again. And if you have any questions, please join our Discord. Thanks.